The first was in this beautiful patch of countryside in Holland. It would have been the most idyllic place ever to get injured. I discovered a sport called Fjörljeppen, where athletes run down wooden piers at full blast, leap onto poles wedged in a moat, and then climb that pole as it quickly traverses the water. The big key is that you have to dismount fast at the end. If you don't, that heavy pole is going to stop abruptly when it hits the other side, but you will keep on going right into the pole. It's tricky, and it all happens in the blink of an eye. Now, I've been doing well in training, so my two coaches are moving me along quickly. Bigger and bigger jumps. Finally, as the day is ending, I tell them I want to try the pro-style ramp. They consent. I line up, get ready to run, and then at the last second, my coach issues a grave warning. Here it is more dangerous. You can break your leg if you jump on the black edge. Sure, that you make it over the edge or let the pole go if you think you're... All right, man. I tell myself, don't think about the edge. Don't look at the edge. Just focus on the other side. Run like hell and climb like a chimpanzee on fire. Holy macaroni. Well, I was curious what canal water was like, and now I have the answer. It's cold. Leapt off in time and just made it. What a rush. The second time I seriously feared for my safety was at Thunder Hill Racetrack. Now the Zoom Zoom team there is awesome. Former pro riders, all at the top of their game. Production wants me to ride a Yamaha R1 around the track, but I haven't been on a bike since that trek through the Himalayas. And although the Machismo with 500 cc's is much brawnier than say, a Honda Dream, it's a far cry from a 1000 cc sport bike, which will take your breath away with its power. We're talking the difference between 23 and 160 horsepower. So I asked Sean Riley from Zoom Zoom to take me on a tour of the track, two up as they say, so I can get a feel for the bike style and a better understanding of the course. Now usually when you get this kind of buddy cruise, it's at an easy breezy pace, but Sean knows he's on TV and he also knows I'm a bit of a daredevil doing paragliding and whatnot so he lets it rip around the course. He's pulling wheelies on all the straightaways and sliding the back tire around the corners, dragging his knee. I'm barely hanging on there on the back. The crew asked me to give a running commentary, but I was so terrified I couldn't get a word out. I was gritting my teeth so hard I could have cut wire in my jaw. but the experience did the trick. By the time I got on the R1 myself, I was good to go. Once you know the full breadth of what a bike can handle, you become much more confident on it. And if death was coming for me that day, it would have been on that two up. Holy cannoli. And speaking of death, my final brush with the guy was in Vietnam. We'd done the snake lunch, me in this silly Christopher Columbus outfit that I sort of entrapped myself into wearing, another story in itself. We eat the snake, but then the question becomes, where did this snake come from? They didn't pull it out of the jungle. So I did a little research and I discovered there's a whole village dedicated to snake breeding. Thousands and thousands of snakes. We roll in, walk around a little bit, and soon find a breeding house. The entire floor covered with tiny doors, each leading to a pit full of venomous serpents. Xin chào. Hello. Hello. 
There's a huge yeah. language barrier here, but I communicate that I want to see snakes, and at the drop of a hat, the guy flips open multiple doors, and suddenly cobras are swirling around on the floor. Now, keep in mind, I just ate a cobra, and karma can be a cold-hearted woman, if you know what I'm saying. But I figure, worst case scenario, I get bit by the snake, I take the anti-venom, and I'll survive. It won't be a pleasant experience, but I'll live to see tomorrow. Although a tiny amputation may be necessary, which is apparently a consolation prize in the world of snake bites. <sighs> so here we are in the middle of nowhere. No hospitals, just snake houses. I've got several cobras moving around on the ground. Other pits are open, so more cobras could come out and I could accidentally step in. And these guys are actively encouraging me to grab the cobras myself. So I decide maybe I should double check on that anti-venom. Now afterwards, I want to see the anti-venom. They don't want to show it to me. In fact, if I want to see it, it'll cost me one million dong. So I have to wonder, did they want me to get bit? There's a good profit margin in that when you only have 15 minutes to negotiate. If 15 minutes, if I bit snake, how much time? Three minutes. Yeah, I'm not sure I can bargain a good anti-venom price in three minutes. It just goes to show you no one cares about your life more than you do, and the value of your life will fluctuate like the stock market depending on your destination. Always keep that in mind. When we come back, I'm going to show you some of my favorite clips that didn't make the edit and give you more behind-the-scenes insight from the road less traveled.